to another episode of Planet Hunters Coffee Chat. I'm your host, Cassie Prolongo, and as always joining me is the amazing Nora Eisner. Hey, Nora. Hi, Cassie. Good to see you. Nice to see you too. So, Nora, we always say that this is Planet Hunters Coffee Chat, but one thing I do want to point out is that we don't really talk about our coffee mugs. So I do want to show people that we do have our coffee mugs, and in particular, I'd like to talk a little bit about my coffee mug, this one that I have. This is a very special one. I'm not going to do this every episode, I promise, but this one is very special to me. Um, we love to talk about science, but my first love was literature. And I actually got this mug at the University of Oxford when uh, they had the Tolkien exhibit, in fact. Yeah, That's so this so was the, can you see it? Yeah, it's really nice. Oh, I yes. love it. So University of Oxford back in the day, absolutely loved it. And it just happened to be around the time that it was my birthday. And thank you very much, University of Oxford, for putting on a Tolkien exhibit that happened to be like around my birthday. And I got this mug and I've just loved it ever since. So putting this out there, you know, send us your mugs while you're watching. We'd love to see it. You know, we'd love to see this is supposed to be a very informal, engaging, happy time that we're talking about science. And sometimes we go off on tangents like what I'm doing right now, but that's okay. We, we like to do that because this is a coffee chat and we enjoy doing these things. So, oh, I yeah. love that story. That's so fun. Um, yeah, it, I can honestly say mine, mine doesn't have the same kind of fun story. Uh, it just has, I don't even know what animal this is, but it has some kind of animal on it. Okay. Um, I thought if you, that was a light curve at first. <laughs> I was like, if you squint a little, okay. Yeah, but, but I can see it's I move really, really far away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, maybe I need glasses, mm, maybe at some point. <laughs> but anyway, but so welcome to Planet Hunters Coffee Chat. <laughs> bring your mug of choice, bring a coffee, bring a tea. If you're over the age of 21, depending on where you are in the world, bring another beverage. We like to have fun, but we don't like to just talk about coffee mugs here. We wanna talk about science. So today we're gonna be talking about orbital periods. And I'm really excited to talk about this. We've talked about resources. We've done some great coding stuff with Python and Lightcurve. And here we're going to talk about uh, orbital periods. And maybe before we get into the data of it, uh, is it possible that you could maybe demonstrate it like in a visual way or, you know, talk a little bit about it um, just so that people are aware of what this is and, you know, how it relates to exoplanets maybe? Um, sure. Demonstrator. Oh, I have an idea. Okay. Hold on one second. I'm going to demonstrate okay. it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> We're having a really fun okay. episode this time, you guys. Okay. I, I think this is allowed. turning into, okay. We're I turning it into a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> we can demonstrate this. Okay. Let's pretend that this is a star. Okay. Okay. It looks like a star. <laughs> I well, mean, only from one side. This oh, pretend okay. it's completely round. You just um, had this at home. This is this is awesome. Okay, random things around my house, and I have a tennis ball <laughs> because I was looking after a, a dog. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, for now, let's pretend that this is a star and this is a planet. Okay. So planets go around stars in circular motions, and they orbit. We call, call it orbits. They orbit around them, and they just um, just go around them continuously. Yep. Once they yep. are in that orbit, they stay in that orbit. So if you imagine this going round and every time it goes round, it blocks some of that light that you see and you mm -hmm. see that dip, you see that transit event. Boop. Yeah, Boop. exactly. Mm -hmm. So if it, it doesn't stop, it goes round every time. So once it reaches the same point that it reached the last time, that's one orbital period. And that's actually the duration of a year. So our Earth does, I'm, I'm stopping every time I get here. It doesn't do that. It does it keep going round. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so okay. our Earth does exactly the same thing. It orbits around the sun and every time it reaches the same point, that's what we call a year. And that's um, how we define the orbital period. So the distance okay. between these dips, between transit events, that's the, the orbital period. The okay. distance between transit events is the orbital yeah. period. Gotcha. Great props, Nora. <laughs> that is just Amazing. I'm really impressed that you happen to have that in your in your place. <laughs> okay, great. So we got the visual done. That's amazing. Um, okay, so now I guess we need to show it through the data. How how would we demonstrate that through through code, through coding? 
yeah, let's look at, I prepared a notebook. So let's look at that. Uh, I'm going to share my screen. Um, Perfect. Okay. Well, perfect. Hopefully you Ooh. can see a notebook. Hopefully these notebooks are starting to look familiar. Um, we've seen these a couple mm -hmm. of times now. Um, yep. And we're, this one's a little bit more filled than you in, filled in, can't talk today, filled in than usual. So um, we're just going to fill in a couple of numbers and the rest hopefully is familiar. And if it's not familiar, then of course, go back to, to some of the, the previous uh, episodes where we looked at these. So in this first one, we're going to import some, some libraries um modules this is just a title this is a text cell and here we enter that tick id that we've been entering um that we've done previously before so um i've pre-selected one we'll do tick and i've copied and pasted it um i think this is wasp 48 b it's a very mm. famous planet so we'll run that cell this next cell is simply to download the data we're downloading spock data there's multiple sectors we're downloading all of those and we're stitching them together just like we previously did which and we've that's... done mm -hmm. yeah it's yep. looking familiar okay and then we plot the data so i am plotting it in a slightly different way to usual um mm. i'm not using that dot plot function and the reason i'm doing it slightly differently is because i wanted to color it in this specific way. And we had to plot it in a slightly different way. This notebook's going to become available. So let's not worry for now about how this code is different and why it's different. You can just run this code. Or alternatively, you can use, you can plot this like curve in exactly the same way that we did previously, where it's like curve underscore collection dot plot. That would also right. work. It would then not be colored in this way though. So the reason I wanted to color it in this way is that this data is now colored by time. So you can see it starts off kind of the earlier times are darker and then the later times are, are brighter. Uh, and we'll come back to why that why I colored it in this way uh, in just a moment. But for now, what we want to do is we want to zoom in on some of these transits because as we just talked about, the distance between transit events, that's the orbital period. And that's the thing that we're currently trying to determine in this data. So let's do that. Let's determine the orbital period from this light curve. So it's the distance between consecutive Sorry, I should have said that. It's between consecutive transits. Um, and we can zoom in on this by drawing a box over this first one. We can then mm -hmm. hover our mouse over it. And then in the bottom right-hand corner, just down here, you can see the numbers appear. And we're going to fill that into transit time one and write that in there. So it's 1931.56. Wait, where are you getting that? Just so that we can clarify it. Which one are you pointing to? Uh, down here, sorry, in the bottom right next to X. Oh. So oh, okay, X gotcha. Equals, that's the time axis equals that. Gotcha. Also read it off down, kind of down here. Um, we're now going to move over to the next one. So we can kind of just drag this data along and move over to the next transit event. And we found there it. There it is. Mm -hmm. And we'll go to time two. And this is roughly 1933.71. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Then we're going to run the cell. So here we've written in time one and time two of two consecutive ones. And the period is now the difference between the two. So it's the difference between oh, it's time two minus time one. And I'm just going to print that out underneath in here. Okay, great. Now let's copy this period. 1.1, 2.1. So two, 2.15 okay. days. Okay, that's the orbital period. It's the for orbital this particular period. Tick, for this particular tick ID. This is the orbital period that we just determined. Now we're going to check whether this is correct. So okay. if it's correct, when we phase fold something, so phase folding is something that we've previously talked about, when we phase fold, all of those dips should align on top of one another. Right. So we're going to do that. We're going to phase fold, and you can see it's slightly wrong. So this is because even though oh. it's close, it's very, very close, even small differences can mean that it doesn't work and the face folding isn't quite correct. So what we can do is we can go back here and we can start altering this a little bit. Let's put a four in there instead. We run it again and we can see it's already a little bit closer, but still not quite there. So we kind of play around with this a little bit. Let's put a five in. Again, slightly closer. Oh, close. <laughs> it's like hitting that three, we're trying to hit that three point shot and it's going around the rim and uh, it's not quite there. And now, yeah. boom, we sunk the shot, okay. Cool. I definitely didn't cheat and look it up, but it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. So you have to you have to play around a little bit with it. I mean, it's not it's not exact. I mean, even looking at it when you plotted it um, and you put that in, that wasn't you had to go through and try to try to find the, the correct time, basically. 
Yeah, so um, it's good to have a starting point. Uh, you want that starting point by looking at the plot and then you can refine it um, by, by changing that number. Mm -hmm. um, I've actually, so instead of changing this number up here, I've, I have written a little script underneath here. So this is just code you can run. You don't necessarily have to write. Um, so I, the only reason I'm saying that is because I'm not going to go through and explain this code. I'm just going to run it. And um, I want to say that you can, of course, do the same. Uh, so I've written kind of this function here and I'm going to run this. And you can see here Ooh. that I've made this little um, kind of slider. And with the slider, you can change that orbital period. And on the right there, it will tell you what orbital period you're currently phase folding at. Um, and here again, I'm using the colors. So this is exactly the same colors. It goes from dark to light. And you can see that they're starting to separate when that orbital period is different, because some of them, kind of the later ones are happening slightly earlier and the earlier ones are happening slightly later. That was confusing. Um, so what we can do here is we can, you can either slide this, I prefer to click on this and then use kind of the arrows on my keyboard and I can shift this one kind of iteration at a time. You can see this number changing on the right and you can see very quickly in what direction you want to move that for that to shift in the right direction and for that to be more overlapping. So I'm just going to- keep So that we can show it. again, the phase folding is overlapping almost directly on top of each other. Is that correct? Exactly, yeah. It sometimes has a bit of a lag in the kind of yeah. the number and the plotting. So uh, you, sometimes it also depends on how quick your computer is, but sometimes you have to be a little bit patient, but this can be a good way to, once you're close to determine that orbital period. Um, so yeah, this is this is how we, we can determine the orbital period. Uh, it's a very important parameter. Um, it, gives you an idea of, well, gives you an idea of how long a year is on that planet, it gives you an idea of how close that planet is to the host star. A longer orbital period means it's further away, a shorter orbital period means it's closer to its host star. Um, so just a really important parameter to start to understand that, that planet a little bit more. And yeah, this is how you, how you can determine it. That's awesome. I mean, this fits perfectly into this whole th area that we're exploring the science behind like exoplanets. And I mean, it just, it seems like really like a small thing to determine, but as Nora just said, I mean, it's very important and you can do this, you can do this at home. So that's the cool, the cool part about this is that anyone can do it. You can do it. You're an astronomer. You can do this. Um, I love that you did the color separation as well. I think that's really important, at least for somebody who's visually minded like myself, I need to be able to see the difference, uh, the color. Cause I, I don't know, it sparks something different in my brain. Um, maybe it's different for other people, but for me, it really helps a lot. Is there anything else about orbital period that you think would be important to talk about today, Nora? Uh, no, I think that that covers the orbital period. Um, but yeah, just as, as you said, it's, it's a very important parameter. So yeah, good that we covered it. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, Nora, for describing orbital period and for those amazing visuals that you just happened to have nearby. I love it. Uh, and thank you for joining us for another episode of Planet Hunters Coffee Chat. Send us your mugs if you'd like while you're watching. We'd love to see it. And we'll be back for another episode next time. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Bye.